Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to the Smarter Building podcast powered by Symmetry, where we talk all things construction and its evolving digital landscape. As most of you will probably know, one of the biggest events in the industry, Digital Construction Week, returned to London a few weeks ago. Designed to showcase the latest innovations, trends and solutions in digital construction, the 2023 show was a great success. And I'm here today with Carolina Orecchini from Diversified Communications, the people that make DCW happen. So thank you for joining us today, Carolina. We're pleased to have you on the podcast and I'm looking forward to hearing your thoughts on how this year's show went and what we can expect for next year. Thanks for having me, Nicole. Um, this is my podcast in Debbie, actually, and I'm very excited. <laughs> and we're glad to have you. So before we get into all the exciting world of DCW, um, could you just tell us a little bit about yourself, your background, passions? Certainly. So on a professional level, I've been running events for about 15 years now. And uh, this is kind of across various industries. It wasn't, wasn't always trade shows, so included sort of beauty, health, well-being, football as well, uh, just to name a few. Um, and then I kind of uh, uh, joined the wonderful world of digital construction and technology. And I have been uh, managing this show for nearly three years now, I think. And um, outside of that, on a personal level, um, I am a massive crafter. I love making jewelry. I love weaving, crochet, tie dye, all sorts of things, anything that I can, can get my hands on. And um, I also love live music. So I go to a lot of gigs and festival and it's a uh, a very busy uh, summer ahead for uh, for me. So that's just a few bits about me. Interesting. So you said that you um, only sort of recently got into construction. How, how does that sort of compare to like the other shows that you've done? Um, so I've really enjoyed the corporate world and the technology world, I think, you know, so uh, that's pretty much where it went. And I think uh, uh, trade shows are great for creating experiences for visitors, for, uh, you know, facilitating networking and business relationships. And I really enjoy that side of things. So, uh, so yeah, so so technology and construction, uh, <laughs> definitely a great choice on, on, on a sort of professional level. And as we mentioned, um, you work with Diversified Communications, who are the organisers of Digital Construction Week. So how did you actually um, get to working with them and how have you been helping with the organisation of the show? Sure. So I joined the uh, DCW team just a couple of months before we went into a lockdown. So that was a very interesting time and it meant that I had to work um, on the show for about 23 months before I actually got to see it um, in real life, uh, which was quite tricky. You're working on something and, and you don't know. I mean, you do. I do know the world of events, but of course, I've never seen DSW before. I've never been to it before, before I joined the team. Um, so, uh, yeah, so that's 23 months. And uh, um, we finally managed to deliver an event in November 2021, which was the postponed edition of the October 2020 show. Um, and it was great and I loved it. And since then, we've uh, uh, delivered an event in May 2022. And of course, just at the, the gone edition in uh, 2023, which was definitely uh, the best one yet. Yep, I uh, love it, enjoy every day. Um, you mentioned, you know, that it used to be in October. What actually um, was the decision to move it to um, the time that it is now in the spring, summer? Yeah, so uh, predominantly was uh, uh, October was a very, very busy uh, time in international event calendar for our industry and we sort of thought springtime um, suited better. And that's uh, that's the reason we made that decision. And of course, where it coincided with COVID, it was probably the perfect timing uh, to do that. Um, and I, I think, you know, everyone is that little bit happier when the sun is out, the weather is warm, you know, there's a lot of networking events uh, around DCW as well. It's great to be outside in London. Our uh, international visitors and exhibitors love a springtime uh, trip to, to London. So, uh, yeah, all things considered, it was a, 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 a great decision and a, and, a, and a good move. Yeah, as an exhibitor ourselves, we found that it was a lot more buzzy this year, you know, just because of the sun was out, everyone was going for drinks on the the um, river afterwards. So, But then also next year, we've noticed it's moved to June. Was that a particular reason for that as well? Um, it's, we obviously want to, to develop and grow the show. And I think, you know, there were uh, sort of a, a, a couple of considerations for that. May again, since we've uh, moved the show to May, uh, there were a couple of other events that um, also took that space. And I think 
uh, uh, June seemed like a natural uh, uh, choice. It's only a couple of weeks after our original May date. And I think, you know, having um, 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 conversations with uh, uh, various people in the industry, June seems like also a, a, a great move just because it's a little bit quieter for everyone. So... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. I think it'll be a good move just because you sort of catch everyone before they go on holiday. And especially this year, we had a lot of bank holidays in May in particular. So it felt quite busy. That's right. So I think, yeah, early June is definitely a, a great move. And the weather should be even better. I think we're sort of on the verge of summer then. So, yes. Fingers crossed. Yeah. <laughs> and then so just going back to your, your job role. So what, what does your daily job role involve working for Diversified? Um, so I very much depends on the on the time of the year so as a as an event organizer for dcw I actually only have uh, run and managed to events digital construction week and digital construction awards so the whole year is pretty much spent on working on those two events and um the daily uh, um, uh role uh, very much varies depending on the time of the year and the show cycle itself um and as with any events, a key to um, a successful uh, uh show is a meticulous planning uh, but it's also about building relationships with exhibitors, sponsors, industry partners, speakers. So my daily role really involves all of the a combination of all of the above. Um, and you know, right now we are at a stage where um, we are going to have loads of planning meetings in the next few weeks involving strategy. We'll be brainstorming creative uh, feature area, um, ideas for 2024, um, and also um, planning the key elements of the show across. Uh, all aspects so summer is always our slightly sort of more of a of a downtown time but a time where loads of important decisions are made that impact the next year's show essentially so 2024 for us right now excellent and you mentioned um the digital construction awards i know that they're coming up in july um what was the inspiration for actually running these awards and what can attendees expect Yes, so we call them the industry Oscars. <laughs> I like it. Uh, yes. Uh, so we really wanted to share um, and recognize the incredible efforts from across um, the sector um, and driving the industry forward. And um, the awards are uh, very much about the outcomes and not about specific technology or a vendor. So um, you can expect a lot of uh, uh, pioneering teams projects or individuals lifting the trophy on the night and um, we have a lot of great uh, companies such as Acom, Arcadis, Make Architects, Lang LaRourke, Skanska, um, Taylor Woodrow, um, Mott McDonald, Winvik and many 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 more um, shortlisted in the run and for the award and um, this is probably the right time to mention as well that if you have been shortlisted and haven't got your ticket yet do not delay we are expecting a sellout. It will be a great night. And likewise, if you are not shortlisted but would like to attend, uh, tickets are still available. Um, it's it's really an amazing night celebrating um, uh, the industry and also a great opportunity to network. And how do you actually go about selecting the nominees for these awards? I mean, you mentioned loads of names there, but yeah, how does that selection process happen? Certainly. So we have a panel of, of uh, impartial and unbiased uh, judges who uh, make the call and essentially select the nominees and um, the winners after all as well. So they represent a, a wide spectrum of uh, disciplines and expertise uh, from across the industry um, and are best really to qual uh, best qualified to recognize the winners um, among the entries. Excellent. And are you able to share with us if there's any special guests attending this year? <laughs> Well, we had an excellent uh, uh, host last year, Russell Kane, uh, um, who did an amazing job. Uh, so if we sort of talking about those lines, uh, uh, celebrity wise, yes, we do have a, a, a great host. You don't want to miss him. We'll be announced on the night. Right. We'll keep our eyes peeled then. <laughs> <laughs> Best to do that. <laughs> and then just going back to, to DCW again, what sort of inspired the, the launch of D DCW? And you mentioned, you know, there's other industry shows. What makes it different to the others? Um, so whereas Ollie Hughes, when you uh, need him, would have been the uh, perfect person to answer this question as the founder of DCW, but uh, I'll try and tack it in his absence. So um, at the time Ollie launched um, DCW back in 2015, uh, BIM was gaining a lot of traction, but not really enough support from the uh, wider industry. And um, there was a huge opportunity to transform 
uh, the built environment through um, innovation technology. And so he felt it needed an engagement uh, from the entire industry and not just those um, with BIM uh, job roles or job titles. And so the aim of uh, DCW was to raise awareness and engage with as many people as possible um, and to look at the role of technology and innovations wide and and as a whole. And in terms of um, the show uh, and what makes us different from other shows, we definitely uh, strictly focused on technology and built environment. So that's all that you're going to see. We are working very, very hard behind the scenes to to, to um, bring the best technology, the best content, um, all under one roof, so the visitors can have a great journey of discovering and and, and learning, and 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 speakers can educate those visitors as well to the latest trends and uh, uh, applications of technology and so on and so forth. So uh, yeah, we 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 do try to to sort of keep our visitors in mind every time uh, um, we plan uh, the show to make their journey as great as possible. Hence, a lot of interactive um, exhibits and features at the show as well. And how do you keep up to date with like the evolving trends in the industry to ensure that this is actually reflected at the show, as you mentioned? Yeah, so uh, uh, DCW keeps me very, very busy. So uh, (laughs) I try to do my best, but it predominantly is industry newsletters uh, that I keep up to date with. LinkedIn is a great source of information. I have some amazing, knowledgeable connections that share a lot of great uh, content. I also love the fact that uh, it predominates bite size. So I can sort of quickly quickly consume the content uh, in between uh, uh, doing other DCW related things or my lunch breaks. Um, so definitely those, those sort of two uh, uh, main things. But at the same time, I also love a, or I'm partial to a, a great industry report. And I tend to download those and save those and read them over the summer uh, during sort of our, our, our di- downtime. Just at the festival before it all starts. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Um, And then just back to this year's show, uh, you know, a few weeks ago, what would you say your highlights are? Uh, Highlights. Uh, So actually, I'm probably going to tackle this from an event manager point of view because I, you know, work all year uh, to deliver the show. Being on site is definitely my favorite part of the job. Meeting the people that I've been talking with and and dealing with for, for, for weeks, months. Uh, or sometimes even years uh, and seeing everyone uh, uh, on site and everything come together. It's definitely the most rewarding part of the job, most enjoyable. So from an event uh, manager point of view, it's definitely a, a, a sellout exhibition space and the record attendance. Those are sort of two things that you want to see. A- aside from that, the cool interactive feature areas that, you know, have a lot of uh, uh, interest at the show and packed out theatres. Again, it just means we're doing something right in terms of uh, the educational programme. And a lot of the theatres this year were uh, standing room only. Um, and as I was sort of zooming past and, 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 and um, you know, across the aisles and across the show floor, it was just excellent to see. Uh, so those were my highlights, but like I said, very much event manager point of view. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. It did feel a lot busier this year. Like you said, all the, the stages were packed out. So it was a, a really positive um, show, I think. And you could see so many people interacting in the aisles as well, networking, you know, old industry friends meeting, you know, uh, uh, or clients. And I, I just love seeing that. And I must say that this year definitely felt like face-to-face events are uh, definitely back yeah. and they are definitely stronger than ever, which is great. No, definitely great to see. And then in terms of more of uh, the innovations and tech across the show, was there any particular trends you noticed on the stand or across the different presentations on the stages? Yeah, so there's probably a couple that are uh, worth mentioning from my point of view. So the use of AR uh, for sure, and that was definitely seen across the exhibition space, but also um, in the educational uh, program. So um, I don't know if you caught the session on uh, Chad GPT Barricades, which generated a lot, a lot of interest, uh, standard room only, and a lot of visitors were sadly unable to join because it was so packed out. So that definitely tells us something. Um, and we definitely saw a, a fair amount of sustainability tech as well, uh, in particular the use of data and to reduce uh, carbon output. So uh, those are probably a couple that I would 
uh, what I was mentioning. And then just in terms of, um, you know, the, the content that people do present, what, what is the most interesting content to you guys as, as the um, organisers? Are there any tips you can provide to potential speakers to help them with submissions for next year, perhaps? Certainly. So we are very lucky. We do get a lot of submissions for our uh, um, call for speakers for uh, the ed- educational content. And there's a lot of amazing speakers that are uh, very happy to share their uh, their knowledge um, and learnings. And very much like our visitors, I do like a project case study, which um, demonstrate the application of technology. And uh, we were spoiled for choice uh, this year with loads of exciting presentations. So a few to worth mention are definitely... Uh, Robert McAlpine and and they delivered a session on the Museum of London which um, seeks to be the smartest museum in the world. Uh, Lango Rogue's session on Everton Football Stadium or the Houses of Parliament restoration and renewal sessions are, uh, are, are, were also great and again very well attended. Um, and um, what all those sessions have in common is that they um, gave excellent examples of using tech and data to create better outcomes. And I think our visitors do love to see a, 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 a real life case study uh, that has real life learning so they can take away and apply uh, in their own project. Yeah, just makes it a bit more more real for their everyday work, I guess. Absolutely, it does. And I think in terms of um, uh, tips, I think, you know, obviously, we, we as any show, we we love to see fresh, never seen before content. Um, and um, I would always say think of, of the audience uh, and think uh, uh, what, how, you know, the, the perhaps their journey, the, the uh, stage of their journey and how your presentation can offer real value to their to them and their day-to-day uh, um, job and uh, that will probably be always sort of uh, always have that at the back of the mind when you are thinking of the key learning points and and, and take us from from the session yeah and you mentioned this year there was um quite a lot of um sustainability talks ai ar what trends and tech um do you think we can expect to see more of in 2024 um it's a very good question, uh, Nicole, and I'll make sure I'll be asking this question to my industry contacts in the coming weeks and months because they are definitely uh, a, a better qualified uh, uh, than I am uh, to answer and they have great insights, of course, being part of the industry. Um, um, however, uh, sort of based on what we w- witnessed at DCW this year um, or just a couple of weeks ago, in fact, I would definitely say sustainability and green buildings um, is right at the top of the list. Um, robotics and automation are um, another one um, and although a little early um, on in terms of the real life applications but with huge potential and um, we had the a National Robotarium at the show this year and the feature right at the front of the show which proved very very popular with visitors and it uh, did a great job demonstrating the benefits of robotics and automation in built environment to tackle industry challenges so I think those are the, the two keywords for 2024 um, just based on uh, what we've witnessed uh, this year but again uh, I might uh, uh, I might have a few more by the end of the year or early next year seeing how things progress. I think being at the show this year as well all of the robotics just seem to draw draw people in and I'm sure that's going to continue and of course sustainability that's not going to go away so I, I 100% agree that's what we'll probably see more of next year. Absolutely, and and rightly so. It's definitely uh, uh, you know, there's need for it. Yeah, definitely. And then, just if you could, is there one thing you would have changed about this year's show, or would you have liked to have seen more of? I'm, I'm, I'll again answer from an event manager point of view on this one, and I've mentioned earlier all the sort of key highlights from the show. And um, I must say, I wouldn't change a thing. The show was great. It was vibrant it was exciting there was a lot of energy around the hall and uh, it was just great to see and we are very very lucky in DCW and we have a lot of amazing exhibitors sponsors uh, partners who put a lot of effort in their participation at the show Um, so you know we've all witnessed uh, uh, loads of sleek looking stands a lot of fun activities on stands competitions and all sorts of other things happening uh, that literally kept that energy so high and also elevated our visitors experience so 
uh, it it's yeah it's phenomenal and and I'm hoping for more and then some for 2024. Um, the only thing that I would change is probably having a, a few more hours in a day. Uh, there's always an ambition plan to try to speak to as many people as possible and 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 obviously you know it's only two days and there's hundreds and hundreds thousands in fact uh, um, of people uh, in the whole so it's impossible but you know uh, again great to see and 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 we are we, you know very lucky that we can facilitate uh, uh, the show. Is there anything exhibitors and delegates can get involved with to keep up with the news and updates ahead of next year's show and the upcoming awards? Um, absolutely. So uh, we, you can subscribe to our monthly newsletter DCW Connect via the website, um, and that brings you not only the show or the awards news, but also a, a roundup of industry news. Uh, we are also very active on social media, so make sure you follow us on Twitter and uh, LinkedIn, and and you get the latest. Um, you can also give me a call if you wish and um, and have a chat about the <laughs> development, what's happening in the world of DCW and Digital Construction Awards too. Great. And then what's in the pipeline for you? Are there any exciting developments you can share with us for DCW 2024? So we, um, you will have to keep your um, eyes or ears peeled for that one as um, the next few weeks are obviously inevitably uh, will result in a lot of great ideas and development. This is our time uh, to work on our strategy for 2024. Um, but the whole team feels very strongly about creating an experience for those attending uh, the show. And uh, we are asking people to embrace new ways of working, new technologies, new challenges. And the only way uh, we can do that is by getting people excited about what life and um, what the future uh, holds. And that's really our reason for being and we are committed uh, to uh, deliver exactly that in 2024 and beyond. So I'm sure there'll be loads of exciting stuff happening, uh, but you'll have to tune in uh, and uh, for, for developments in the coming months. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for joining us, Carolina. It was great to have you. And we look forward to seeing you next year at the 2024 show. That's 5th and 6th of June, absolutely. And the awards, 4th of July for the awards, 5th and 6th of June for the show. Thank you so much for having me, Nicole. I've, I've uh, uh, really enjoyed this.